Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about financial statement analysis. To be specific, we will proceed to solvency ratios. Just a quick recap. Financial statement analysis is the process of examining the financial statements. To evaluate the financial position and performance of an entity for decision making purposes. Financial statement analysis can come in the form of horizontal analysis, vertical analysis, and ratio analysis. We are now in ratio analysis. Again, ratio analysis is a technique where different line items from the financial statements are being compared including those items across financial statements. For example, balance sheet to income statement items and vice versa. Ratio analysis can be classified into the following four. Liquidity ratios, solvency ratios, activity ratios, and profitability ratios. We will now focus our attention to solvency ratios. Appreciate what solvency ratios measure, we should first define what solvency is. Solvency means survivability or financial viability. It is the ability of the company to operate indefinitely into the future as a going concern. So what do solvency ratios measure? They measure the ability of an entity meet long-term obligations when they come due. In other words, it is whether the company will be able to pay all, especially the non-current, liabilities. Let us proceed to the common solvency ratios. We have the debt ratio, which is equal to total liabilities over total assets to equity ratio, total liabilities over total equity, and times interest earned or pay ratio, which is equal to earnings before interest and taxes over interest expense. Let's focus on the debt ratio and the debt to equity ratio first. We all know that the existence of debt lowers the chance of the company to survive in the long run. But why is this the case? If we are to finance the assets of the company, it can come from either of the two, debt or equity. If the assets of the company are financed purely by equity, non-payment of dividends to the equity participants, also known as the common shareholders, would work out just fine for the company with no or little repercussion. It will not affect the entity's ability to operate as a going concern. But if liabilities or debt is the source of funding for the assets of the company, such would require principal and interest payments that when unpaid, when due, can cause the company to default. In other words, it can lead the company to insolvency or sometimes bankruptcy. Considering this, we can say that lower debt ratios and debt to equity ratios mean better solvency for the company. In order to demonstrate how the debt and debt to equity ratios are calculated, let us refer to the following case. OPM Oil Incorporated is a processor of petrol. The following data were lifted from its statement of financial position as of 31 December 2020. Short term debt 30,000 pesos. Long term debt 40,000 pesos. Equity 70,000 pesos. Total assets 140,000 pesos. We are asked to determine the following, the debt ratio and the debt to equity ratio. 
how would we calculate the debt ratio? This equal to total liabilities over total assets. How about the debt to equity ratio? It is calculated as total liabilities over total equity. Let us now calculate the debt ratio. Total liabilities is the sum of short-term and long-term debt. That's 30,000 plus 40,000 pesos. We have total liabilities of 70,000 pesos divided by the total assets of 140,000 pesos. We have a debt ratio for LPM oil company 0 0.50 to 1. 0.50 is to 1. How would we interpret this? For every peso of assets acquired and controlled by the company, it is 50 centavos financed by debt. And of course, the remaining 50 cents would come from equity. In short, 50% of the assets book value is funded by liabilities, especially debt. Let's now go to the debt to equity ratio. Again, the total liabilities is 70,000 pesos. Divide this by the total equity of 70,000 pesos. We would have the debt to equity ratio of 1 or 1 to 1. How would we interpret this? Well, for every peso of equity financing the assets of the company, there is 1 peso of debt. Again, the debt ratio is 0.50 is to 1. Debt to equity ratio, 1 is to 1. Again, lower debt ratios and debt to equity ratios would mean better chance of survival for the company. Are these ratios good enough? Again, we cannot answer that question. We cannot interpret a ratio in isolation. There should be a basis for comparison. It could be, more commonly, the industry average or the industry standard for that ratio. Given that there is no industry information given, we cannot answer that question. Now, let us proceed to the third solvency ratio, times interest earned or tie ratio. Calculated as earnings before interest and taxes, or EBIT, divided by the interest expense. The tie ratio measures how many times earnings from operations can cover for the interest expense. Obviously, the higher the tie ratio, the better it is for the company. Let us proceed to the following case. OQR Corporation showed the following income statement for the year just ended. We are asked to determine the times interest earned or tie ratio. Times interest earned. This is equal to EBIT over interest expense. Again, EBIT is the income figure before deduction of interest and taxes. In this case, it is our operating income, 15,000 pesos, which we would consider as EBIT, divided by the interest expense of 6,000 pesos, we have a tie ratio of 2.5 times. Interpretation. The operating income of OQR Corporation can cover the interest expense 2.5 times over. There's more than sufficient operating income to cover such financing costs. Again, the higher the times interest earned, the better chance of survival the company has. Now, let us proceed to this question. If debt decreases solvency, why do companies accrue debt in the first place? The answer, because debt and magnify the upside. We call this principle leverage. To understand how this works, let us imagine the following case. 
let us say you are starting a business you only have enough money to meet 25% of the funding needs of this business. What are you going to do? Well, you actually have at least two options. You can look for other people who are willing to be co-owners with you. You will have to offer them a stake in your company, meaning to say, they will get around 75% of the company's equity. As a result, when income is to be distributed, they are also entitled to 75% of the income from your business. Or, the second option, instead of looking for other owners, you may just want to borrow funds to finance the missing 75% funding of your company. This can be illustrated in the right circle. Note that in the second option, whenever the company will earn income, it will all accrue to you, the sole equity participant, after paying the interest expense due to whoever the lender of your debt is. In this case, after paying for a small constant interest amount, you are entitled to all earnings, no matter how excessive it may be. As such, you can now appreciate how leverage works. Yes, it is true that the existence of debt can reduce the chances of survival. However, it can also mean that any excess earnings above the interest expense would mean everything will go to you. To summary, the level of debt shouldn't be too high to the point that it causes insolvency. However, the level of debt shouldn't be too low to the point that it misses out the benefit of leverage. If you want a full discussion on leverage, please refer to the following video. Link on the description. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe.